not, this is not your first Comic Con. Does it still does it still kind of overwhelming, or is it kind of cool? Like you're kind of used to it by this point. <laughs> You know, parts of it, I, I feel like I'm used to, like now, like we come into this room and it's like, okay, I, I understand it's the round tables and then it's uh, the the uh, carpet and the interviews. A few friendly faces. A few friendly faces, of course, which is always lovely. Um, you, you can judge, well, you, you go, oh, oh, oh yeah, you from last year, I know you're going to make me feel awkward. Oh, oh, oh okay, this is going to be all right, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, the thing that remains overwhelming... Uh, at the risk of sounding cliche, is is seeing the fans firsthand because we film. Uh, I mean, in a bubble in in Atlanta yeah. and New Orleans, we're we're there. We're often kind of away from all the hype of the show. So, you know, um, going and doing the panel, walking the streets, uh, having face-to-face uh, -face contact with the fans, you see, wow, people really uh, they really do respond to the show and, and relate to it, and that's something which is incredibly rewarding and, and, and always sort of I'm taken aback by that like I think oh this year it will have died down a bit right. or this year it won't be the same but no it's it's amazing. It's like seeing you guys. Yeah. Um, so I know you guys are just getting started this next week on the new season. What what do you know about Klaus's journey and is the guy going to find a little happiness maybe this year or a little happy? I don't happy know something? you know I, I mean I, I've read the first few episodes we find him as we left him, although some time has passed, you know, he's alone, he's alienated everyone in his family, especially his brother. Um, although Elijah's come back to the fold, he's certainly, the, the bond doesn't exist between them like it did. So he's really, um, I suppose, Klaus wants everything to get back to normal, but it can't because he's, you know, put this, or uh, uh, helped put this curse on Haley. so she's a wolf now through the, the the month, and he's alienated his brother by killing his girlfriend, and, uh, you know, pretty much betrayed everybody who was on his side before, so he really is, um, y you know, he's... He He's uh, a lonely king of the castle at the beginning of season three. Um, one thing I can tell you, uh, which I don't know if I'm supposed to, but Julie's busy, so I'm going to, is that um, season three, I think, for me at least, feels like a uh, season of the vampires. You know, whereas the second season was very much about uh, dealing with the parents, uh, and the first season was very uh, witch-based with the Harvest Girls and then the Four Rising. Season three seems to be all about uh, the vampires, the sires sort of, of Klaus and shit, Elijah. Like a lot of horseshit. Is Elijah's storyline during season three. Uh, he he's basically finds himself in a vat of manure that, that Klaus has, has had brought in from the stables of New Orleans and, and is forced to kind of swim to the edge uh, whilst trying to uh, prevent himself from choking on the excrement. So. I was say, and that's a good thing for Daniel to have to go through. I, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, real quick, um, for fans that want to see Klaus and Cammy together, is there some hope that there might be some little love in there? I mean, man, you're asking the wrong person because, I mean, there's always hope, right? There's hope for, for Klaus and everyone, I think, but, you know, Klaus seems to be the, the, um, the, the, the one who will trample hope at every corner, you know, just when it feels like it, it, it might happen, he's the one kind of stamping it out and messing it up, so Tragic I figure. don't know, I know, right? It's so sad.